Hi, I'm Jasper. Do you remember my story? If not, then be sure to watch part one. A few months ago, my girlfriend Lucia disappeared. I was sure that her tyrant of a father had taken her away. I looked for her, but found no leads. I kept going to my school of art and working. I even managed to open my own small graffiti agency. Guess what I called it? Angel in Lucia's honor. And so, one day, I was sitting in the office and watching a sketch when I suddenly got a call from an unfamiliar number. When I answered, I heard some noise and muffled voices. And then, the line went dead. Soon, I got a message from the same number with just one word, Sedona. I was extremely confused and called the number back, but it was unavailable. I googled the word they sent me and found out that Sedona was a small town in Arizona. It was famous for its views and art galleries. Art galleries? My heart immediately started beating faster. It couldn't be a coincidence. The caller must have been Lucia. My best friend Kit worked for me. I knew his brother was a computer guru and turned to him for help. I asked him to find out whose number the call had been made from. It turned out that it belonged to Mrs. Page. I wrote down her address, left Kit in charge of the agency, and left for Sedona that evening. When I arrived, I immediately went to the address we'd found. A woman opened the door for me. At first, she was acting friendly, but as soon as I started talking about Lucia, she frowned. Young man, stop bothering me with questions. I don't know anything. Miss Page looked scared and was obviously hiding something. She slammed the door in my face. I walked away from her house, sat down on a bench, and tried to think of what to do next. All of a sudden, a girl sat down next to me. Hi, my name is Christy. I saw you talking to my mom. Did you want to ask her about Lucia? I had hope again. Do you know what happened to her? Where is she? Mr. Allen and his daughter moved a few months ago. My mom worked as a cook for them. Mr. Allen wasn't kind to Lucia. He would lock her up, forbid her from using her phone and internet. He constantly made her study or draw even though Lucia didn't want to. My mom became Lucia's friend and gave her her phone number. However, when she called you, Mr. Allen came back. He took away her phone, locked Lucia up again, and fired my mom. I clenched my hands into fists. Poor Lucia. She had gone through so much. Christy agreed to take me to their house. I was about to sneak inside when Mr. Allen himself came out on the porch. He was on the phone and looked very angry. Christy and I hid around the corner and eavesdropped. Look, are you a detective or not? What am I paying you money for? My daughter ran away a day ago and you still haven't found her. What? Lucia had escaped? Staying there was useless and so we left. We walked into a cafe and tried to figure out where to look for Lucia. I was sure she would contact me soon, but I just couldn't sit around and wait. I was sure she would go back to her hometown, so I had to hurry back as well. It's getting late. How are you going to get back at night? She convinced me to wait until the next morning, and I rented a hotel room. After checking in, I suddenly discovered that I had lost my phone. I rummaged through all my things, looked in my pockets, but it was nowhere to be found. Damn it! That was the worst possible moment to lose it. What if Lucia called me? I didn't remember any passwords and needed my phone to use social media. I felt really down and didn't sleep a wink. Early in the morning, Christy suddenly came to the hotel. When I saw the suitcase standing next to her, I was very surprised. Can I come with you? My aunt lives in your city and she has been asking me to visit. So we went together. When she found out that I had lost my phone, Christy gave me her old phone. The first thing I did was check the place where I used to live with Lucia. Christy and I walked around the neighborhood and went to the apartment but Lucia was nowhere to be found. I was looking around the street when I suddenly noticed something. There was a girl that looked a lot like Lucia standing at a bus stop. I wanted to come up to her, but Christy suddenly hugged me. Don't worry, we will definitely find her. I thanked her for her support, but decided to talk to the girl at the bus stop anyway. But then, a bus pulled up. The girl got on it, and I didn't manage to get a look at her. After that, we went to the office. Kit looked like he hadn't slept in days. We are too busy dealing with these damn documents to do anything else. Jasper, please hire someone good with numbers already. Christy suddenly spoke up. I am actually studying to be an economist. I could help you out while I'm visiting my aunt. That was exactly what we needed, so I hired her on the spot. I finally got lucky. Over the next couple of days, I went to all the police stations and showed the cops pictures of Lucia. But that brought no results. She hadn't gone to the police. I despired and began to suspect that she had stayed in Sedona, or maybe the detective had found her first. One day, I was sitting in the office when Christine came to me. 
she told me that we had got a cool offer. A fashion house planned to put on an unusual show right on the street. They wanted us to draw graffiti on the wall in the area where the show would take place. The offer was really cool. Collaborating with such a brand was a huge step forward for us. All I could think about was Lucia, but I knew that I had to keep working as well. The next day, we met with the chief fashion designer and discussed the details. We have several conditions. First of all, we like your works, so you have to draw the graffiti yourself. Secondly, you will come to the catwalk in one of our costumes and make a speech. It will be the most important part of the whole show. That made me hesitate. I had been planning to go to Sedona, but how could I do that if I was too busy drawing? The fashion house refused to compromise, so I had to agree to their terms. When I told my agency about everything, Christy agreed to help me once again. She called her mom and convinced her to go to Mr. Allen's house and get to the bottom of everything. Soon, Mrs. Page called her back and said that there was no news about Lucia in Sedona. The next day, I started working on the graffiti. It reminded me of the time when Lucia and I had been preparing for the city competition. The fashion house liked my idea and a graffiti of a girl with wings gradually appeared on the wall. One day, Christy and I stayed late in the office. I offered her a ride home, but for some reason she hesitated. Is something wrong? Christy smiled tightly and finally agreed. When we arrived, there was just a grocery store at the address she had given me. Christy laughed nervously. I'm still getting my aunt's address wrong sometimes. My house is over there. After saying goodbye, I pretended to leave, parked around the corner, and watched Christy. I knew the house she had pointed at. My friends lived there. Why hadn't Christy given me her real address? A couple of minutes later, she got into a taxi and I followed her. Christy arrived at a hotel, which surprised me even more. Why did she live there and not at her aunt's? Or was there no aunt to begin with? Her behavior seemed suspicious to me. I called Kit's brother again and asked him to find out the truth. He called me back a half an hour later and confirmed that Christy had no relatives in the city. But why had she been coming with me then? The show was scheduled for the next day and I wanted to put the finishing touches to the graffiti. So I decided to deal with Christy later. I came to finish my graffiti and saw a guy standing next to it. He was studying it carefully. When I got closer, he gave me a friendly smile. You're Jasper, right? My name is Mark. I've been a big fan of your work for a long time. This one is absolutely amazing. His words flattered me and we got to talking. Mark turned out to be a great conversationalist. I invited him to the show the next day and he promised to come. In the morning, the fashion designer and other employees of the fashion house looked at my finished work. Everyone loved it. Before the show, I was given an outfit I was supposed to wear on the catwalk. It turned out to be an angel costume. When I saw it, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry, but a contract was a contract and I had to put it on. Kit and Christy came to the show as well. At some point, security came up to us to check our passes. Christy rummaged through her things and couldn't find hers. Then, her phone suddenly fell out of her purse. Wait a minute, it was my phone, the one I had lost in Sedona. Christy tried to pick it up, but I beat her to it. I turned it on, looked through the call history, and couldn't believe my eyes. Lucia had called me more than once. Then I checked the messages and started shaking with rage. The last message sent to Lucia said, I'm tired of looking for you and I've found a new girlfriend. Deal with your problems yourself and don't call me anymore. It was clear that that message had been sent by Christy, but why? I lost my temper, pushed her against the wall and demanded an explanation. But then I heard the host, it was my cue. I wanted to walk away from the stupid show, but the agency would have had to pay a big penalty. So I had to pull myself together. I got on the catwalk and was given a microphone. The host warned me that the show was being broadcast live throughout the city. I had prepared a speech in advance, but ended up saying something completely different. This is graffiti of my angel. Angel, if you can hear me, please let me know where you are. Trust me, I love you and I won't let you down again. I was hoping Lucia would hear me, and you know what? She did! When I was coming down from the catwalk, I got a message with an address. I asked Kit to watch Christy and rush there. I came to a poor neighborhood, looked around, but didn't see anyone. Then I suddenly heard someone sobbing behind the garbage cans. I came closer and saw Lucia. Tears were streaming down her face, and she looked terrible. But it didn't matter. I finally found her. Lucia must have gone without food for a while. She could barely stand. I picked her up and carried her to the car. I was afraid to go back to our apartment, so I decided to take Lucia to my parents' house in my hometown, especially since they weren't there at the moment. On the way there, I stopped by a supermarket and bought ready-made food. At home, Lucia ate, took a bath, and calmed down a little. However, as soon as she felt a bit better, she immediately pounced on me. You traitor! How could you do this to me? That moment, she looked like her old self. The meanest girl in college who saved my life. 
It took some work, but I managed to calm her down again and convince her to tell me everything that had happened. My father took me away for a reason. Shortly before that, I had found out his dirty secret. Half of the paintings in his collection had been stolen. We had a fight, and I threatened to turn him into the police. Then, he took me to Sedona by force. I managed to escape and came back here with the last of my money. I went to our apartment and saw you hugging another girl there. I felt so hurt I left without talking to you. So it really had been her. That girl who had gotten the bus really had been Lucia. In the evening, I decided to call you after all, but you didn't answer, and then texted me to leave you alone. I told her I hadn't texted her that. It had all been Christy. She was probably helping Mr. Allen and hung out with me all the time on purpose. Lucia told me how hard life had been for her in the recent weeks. She starved and didn't have a place to sleep. She was afraid to go to the police in case her father found her. She didn't want to go back to him for anything. Her words made my heart sink. I scooped her up in my arms and hugged her tightly. There's no way I'm letting you go again. We sat there for a while longer, and then I suggested we go to the police together. Lucia agreed. We looked out the window, made sure that there was no one suspicious on the street, and left the house. Just as we got down from the porch, someone suddenly attacked us. We hadn't even had time to come to our senses when we were pushed into a car with tinted windows and taken somewhere. I tried to get free but had no success. Soon, we found ourselves in the house that Allens used to live in. They locked us in Lucia's room. There were bars on the windows. I didn't understand how they had found us. Christy had been with Kit and couldn't have followed us. The door suddenly opened and Mr. Allen walked into the room. And with him was... No, it was impossible. It was Mark, the guy who had claimed to be a fan of my work. It soon became clear that he was the detective Mr. Allen had hired. I couldn't believe I had invited him to the show myself. What am I supposed to do with you, Jasper? I don't need you, but my daughter must have told you about the paintings. I can't just let you go. You'll hand me over to the police right away. Let us go. I promise we'll just live our lives and keep quiet about you. Mr. Allen chuckled. I don't trust promises. Besides, Lucia owes everything to me. I've invested too much into her. She will become my successor and do everything I say. As for you, you stay here for now. I'll decide what to do with you tomorrow. After he and Mark left, I hugged Lucia tightly again. Don't listen to him. You don't owe him anything. Lucia pulled away. She looked at me with tear-filled eyes and uttered words that made me fall even deeper in love with her. You are my angel. We tried to figure out how to escape, but nothing came to mind. The situation seemed hopeless, but I wasn't about to give up. Then we heard a noise downstairs, and then footsteps and voices. The door to our room opened again, and I was stunned. Those were my parents. The last time my dad had been so angry was when I had run away from home. Although, come to think of it, now he wasn't just angry. He was furious. The cops were hovering behind my parents. How did you get here? There is a video surveillance in the house you brought Lucia to. That's how I found out you were kidnapped. I stayed out of Alan's business, but he crossed a line when he took you. I used my connections, and here we are. Lucia told the police about the stolen paintings. It turned out they had been in the house the whole time. Mr. Allen had been afraid to take them with him to Sedona. He had a full vault in the basement of his house. Lucia entered the code on the door and let the cops in. Mr. Allen was arrested, and we finally breathed a sigh of relief. Soon, we found out that Kit was dating Christy. To be honest, I was shocked by the news. One day, they asked us over, and Christy told us her story. She loved dancing, but her mother made her study economics. Mr. Allen promised to get Christy into the School of Art if she helped him. I'm so sorry. I'm so ashamed of what I did. Lucy and I were so happy that we couldn't bear a grudge. After a while, Christy plucked up the courage and transferred to the School of Art on her own. We often <laughs> hang out with her and Kit. After the fashion show, our agency became very popular. People stand in lines to take pictures with my graffiti. The Flying Girl has become a city landmark. Lucia and I are improving and developing our brand. We get a ton of commissions, and my parents are very proud of me. That's my story. You know, after going through all this, I can say with confidence, true love exists. Do you believe in it? If you're watching this, you've already breached the SCP Foundation protocols. Stay where you are. The cleanup team is on the way. In the meantime, you can watch stories of the people who were lucky enough to encounter the most anomalous SCP objects. When the Foundation staff arrives, you will be treated by Class A amnestics and you won't recall anything. This record will self-destruct in 3, 2, 1.